Welcome to the Claire Auden Podcast. In this series, The Narc Behind the Educator, I and fellow narcissism educators discuss and share our own personal journeys with the narcissist and narcissistic abuse in our own lives. Eleni, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. It's so good to have you on. I love your content. I love the way that you break down narcissistic abuse. I thank you so much. I keep telling you, I love your content. Um, I love thank how you. you're able to, like every single time you make a video, I'm always like, that was him to the TV. I feel like you're the technical side and I'm like the emotion side. <laughs> goes hand in hand. I told yeah. you. <laughs> okay. So tell me how you met your narcissist. So I had just moved to LA. Um, I work in marketing in the video mm -hmm. games industry and he is an influencer that plays video games on YouTube. So okay. similar spaces, right? You know, I was like, doing my little thing, posting my little selfies, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, he started commenting on those. And oh, so he slid, slid into your dance. Yes, exactly. Okay. And he got at me and told me that I was the one that reached out to him first. I don't really not, like kind of go back and look at all the all the previous messages and stuff like that. No, he reached out first. Um, it's so crazy when you've been in a narcissistic relationship and they accuse you of something, and it's to the point that you're like, maybe this is true, and you have to go back and check. Why would you lie? Like, why? Like, was it just an ego yeah. thing? Maybe. Probably. Um, yeah. And then uh, he, he did was the one first that like asked me out mm -hmm. and the first date was amazing. And the first few months were like an actual dream. I was like, I met this, my soulmate. I didn't believe in soulmates before this. You felt like he was your soulmate. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, we had okay. so much in common. Tell me about that. You felt like you had so much in common. So a typical kind of love bombing soulmate. I now noticed there was a lot of like future faking. Um, okay. He asked me in like the first month, he was like, I wonder what kind of wedding dress you would wear, you know? Wow. So already <laughs> thinking about that and like a dummy, I was like, oh, I would like this kind of thing or that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Did um, it feel good or was, was there any kind of gut feeling or did it just feel good? It, I realized that it was moving so fast. Like, okay. and the other thing is I wasn't talking to people really. So I was just like, this is like, it's so amazing. And I didn't realize it was going so fast. Like a month in okay. talking about that, a month in like implying that he wanted to say that I love you a month in, like that's absolutely, yeah. ab ab that's abnormal. But I didn't, yeah. I had actually never been love bomb before. So I didn't okay. know that it was yeah. normal, yeah. There's something about narcissistic relationships and the accelerated pace. A month then actually feels like you've known them for a lot longer. Yes. This yeah. whole relationship it feels like I three feel months like I've been married. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've known them for like 10 years. In fact, they actually had told him that. I was like, I feel like I've known you forever. Yeah. yeah. And I think that was the mirroring. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's so hard to pinpoint because I'm like, so how was he mirroring me? Was it like just my personality he was mirroring? Just like, yeah. just thinking everything I did was like, it was so, he was a very covert narcissist. So I didn't okay. even realize it was happening until the, towards the end of the relationship. Wow. So what kind of position were you in when you met him? I was actually thriving. I was doing so okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cause yeah. a lot of people fall into these relationships when they're in a not so great place. I've heard that. I've absolutely yeah. heard that. Um, Dr. Sandra L. Brown says she, when she works with psychopaths, they, they could either be like in a great place or an awful mm -hmm. place, right? So they mm -hmm. want something for like money, status, power. Okay. Or, um, and they will prey on that. And that's what I had just got a new job, just got this awesome apartment. My, like everything, my life is doing so well. Mm -hmm. um, it's better now, but like, yeah. <laughs> better now, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, when he met me, I was like, truly, like, I was like, I had just moved. I saved up money. I was, I got a new job. I was being paid well. Like, 
I yeah. was doing really, really well. The problem is that I was broadcasting that. I was posting that on social okay. media because I don't okay. know from where I was. Yeah. You know, I was watching this Dr. Ramani video recently and she was talking about how people tend to think that, you know, it's people with low self-esteem that fall into these relationships because that love bombing feels so good. But she also said that a lot of people actually have really good self-esteem. And when the narcissist comes in and love bombs them and tells them that they're amazing, they're like, yeah, I am amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that was me as well. Like in my situation, when he was telling me like, oh, you're so like successful and you're this and you're that. And I just kind of was like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially because yeah. I had been dating like rough, like a little bit, but not right. too much. I was kind of experienced, but the experiences that I had were people that were doing the opposite. So they were ghosting mm. me. They were oh, yeah. to communication. And so when I met the narcissist, they were the opposite. And so I was like, oh my gosh. And then they were so like all this flattery telling me I'm a mm. goddess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do they you use are that a goddess. lot? Goddess. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, and then he <laughs> uh, wrote these letters that were just like, I'm so glad I finally got to meet you and you're wow. just the most special person. Mm. And I just like, I, what do you say? He's just like, I, you're the most amazing person. I got to meet you. And I'm just so, I can't believe yeah. we finally met each other. Basically what he yeah. said. It's interesting that you say that, you know, you'd had these dating experiences before where they were kind of ghosting or they were in and out because I had a similar situation because I'd just gotten out of a seven month relationship with someone who was an extreme avoidant. And I was getting, he was very one foot in the door, one foot out the door. And I was getting emotionally abandoned, like regularly in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Like he couldn't handle serious conversations. And like, I'd just gotten in that relationship three months after my dad had died. And then, yeah. And then when he dumped me on my dad's first year sort of death anniversary, um, I met the narcissist really shortly after that. And he was so like, I want this. I want you. I want this relationship. I'm here. I'm yeah. going to make this work. And that was so attractive at that point. Yeah. And so like, I started to notice that it was going very quickly, but okay. the thing is, and I, and when I say he's pathological, I think he doesn't even realize what, how quickly it was to be completely okay. fair. Yeah. Um, because he's shown me off to his friends, his family. I'm usually that girl too that guys will show off to their their family and their friends. Because okay. I'm like, you know, but I, I usually is the first thing. Like I'm usually friends with their mom. Like that's kind <laughs> of how yeah, <laughs> like how it goes. But yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. And so he, I met his whole family very early okay. on, very mm. early. I went to like Christmas or not Christmas. Mm -hmm. I went to um, like. Uh, like I went, went to like Thanksgiving and I went to like, mm -hmm. like all these like holidays of them. Um, and then after he like started to take me on these trips, like we went to mm -hmm. Italy and um, so these also really? like, how, really, how yeah. soon in did he take you to Italy? I want to say like three, four months, three months in. Okay. Was it like an extravagant, like lavish holiday? Like what did that look like? Yeah. Um, well, we had uh, private black vans that took us everywhere, and chefs. Oh my god! Just to like put it, yeah. It Is was that because he was wild. hashtag famous? Like, how did he? Yeah. Have, like, <laughs> wow. He's he's hashtag famous, and then his his family is also incredibly incredibly wealthy and like generational wealth. That mm -hmm. must have really wowed you. Oh yeah, he pulled out yeah. all the stops. He went on multiple vacations. It wasn't just the one. It was just like oh. like constant. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot. Um, and then on top of it, you introduce your friends, your family, and you know, yeah, all of them this will use their family to love bomb you and future fake you. Yeah. And yeah. that's the problem. I was like, oh, I, I, you know, his family seemed really normal, you know? So, mm. uh, yeah, I know I hear a lot about like toxic narcissistic families. His family mm. seemed pretty normal. That, okay. that was the, it threw me off. Yeah. So I had an experience like maybe four or five years ago where I was training Muay Thai at a gym and I started dating one of the Muay Thai trainers and he was like a raging 
Right. This is kind of like an oxymoron. He was a raging covert narcissist. <laughs> so he had this amazing image as being like this, just the best guy ever. And yeah. we only dated for like six weeks, but I remember he was telling me that he loved me after like the second date, which was super uncomfortable, but he <laughs> pulled out his phone. And I think this was like maybe the fourth or fifth date. Like he pulled out his phone and called his family and introduced me to his family on video. And I was like, oh, he's really serious about this relationship. Like yeah. he's introducing me to his family. Like I thought it was a bit much, but that like using the family to help love bomb you is like, it gets you. It does. And you have to wonder if the family at a certain point is like, not this again. <laughs> right? Yeah, like this is the 12th girlfriend this year. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing, like, while they were normal, I was getting the feeling from his friends and family that should I be more cautious because really? they seemed a little, yeah, and I didn't know how to pick up on that, but, you know, I'm not sure if they were, like, aware that he does this a lot, I'm okay. assuming they were at, at some point, but I saw, like, in the initial reservation towards me, yeah. and I wasn't sure why that was, because I've never experienced okay. that before, but. Okay. It was in there, yeah. Wow. So what was the first big red flag? Um, I think the very first time I saw the mask like slip was like two I my timing is way off, but we were it's together okay. for like seven months, but like I want to say two or three months in. Um okay. and that's when we were driving in the car and I think I mentioned something about him being an influencer and we're talking mm -hmm. about our jobs like and he goes he like it was an abnormal reaction where he okay. like became very angry and then started saying how he's not an influencer he's a content creator and how oh, he thinks okay. yeah and how he thinks influencers are talentless hacks oh, all wow. this other stuff yeah and so I was like okay you know I guess this is a touchy subject I didn't mean to call you that I just how angry was he was it like off the handle it was well he was driving so it was kind of scary too so oh. it was very much like uh it was irrationally angry it was like telling me that you know he's like I'm not an influencer I'm a content creator I don't know where, like this is like they're they're hacks they're talentless they're wow. all I actually make and that's worth it like all this other wow. stuff yeah and I was like Oh, because I hadn't seen that side of him yet, you know, I'd yeah. only, only seen the calm, yeah. love bombing side of him. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't know how to respond to that. Like, how yeah. do you respond to that? Um, I was just like, that's a very touchy subject and I won't call him an influencer again. Yeah, that's that hypersensitivity to criticism <laughs> and fragile ego coming yeah. through. Yeah. And how he thinks he's better than under other content mm. creators. Where in reality, he, you know, he gets all these sponsorships from like these like mobile games and promotes them. He's an influencer. Like that's an influencer, he guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's an influencer. Uh, if, you, oh. if you promote Raid's Shadow Legends on the regular, I don't know what else to call you. I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were some of the other red flags? Yeah. Um, to be honest, there weren't that many until we moved okay. in together. Yeah. How soon into uh, the relationship did you move in? So we, I co-signed on a house six months into knowing him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, I mean, speed is like, you know, uh, Lee Hammock, self-aware narcissist, always says that speed is the weapon of a narcissist because they know they yes. can't keep it up. So they rush yep. to these things, marriage, buying a house, having a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And these are all, um, there's on the domestic violence website, these things called tipping points. And that's when- okay. Typically, you'll see a covert narcissist truly drop their mask yeah. um, after marriage, after you get uh, pregnant, after you move in mm -hmm. together, um, after if you're sick or you're ill, especially that because they don't have empathy. Mm. Yeah. See that. Yeah. So all of yeah. these things are very textbook. But yeah, it was after yeah. we moved in together and you just can't keep up the facade when you're living with someone 24-7. Yeah. So tell me about that. How quickly did the mask come off? Um, it started very subtly and slowly. So okay. it was 
we had that one initial is- incident and then mm-hmm. the very subtle criticisms and and suggestions of how he wanted me to be and molding me started mm-hmm. happening yeah, um, okay. so the, yeah so like the preferences saying things are preference I prefer women without makeup I prefer women without uh, like hair that wear I certain thought with suggestion for- yeah yeah exactly everything yeah. had crazy attached even to like my my skincare he's like oh they have so many chemicals and them. you shouldn't be using that like everything was like every mm-hmm. tiny thing had a criticism attached to it do you think that he was threatened by your appearance like he was trying to make you less attractive like what was that about you reckon I there's a lot of theories right yeah. so a lot of narcissistic men will try and break you down if they feel mm-hmm. like you are more attractive than them mm, um, because that was my situation yeah because they're jealous of you which is mm-hmm. wild to think that someone could be jealous of their partner I think mm-hmm. but that's what they do and so I think definitely that but also I start noticing when I'm not taking care of myself in the t- typical ways I take care of myself mm-hmm. my self-esteem is it like, I do believe like, if you feel good, if you look good, you feel good. So yeah. I started yeah. noticing like my self-esteem wasn't quite where it was because I was starting yeah. to change for him. Well, a big part of self-esteem is looking after yourself, believing that you're, yeah. you're worth it. And it's not just about how you look, it's eating well, it's sleeping, it's, you know, yeah. looking after yourself properly. Yeah. 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 So what happened next? It started getting crazier and crazier. Okay. <laughs> that's that's when um, it, it moved from like me, like it was always like the changing the way I looked, but also the, mm-hmm. um, what he, I started wondering if it was OCD or something because all of a sudden it became everything in the house that wasn't clean or wasn't put away properly. I didn't do it right. He would scrutinize mm-hmm. immediately. Okay. So like the, the towels were folded properly the mm-hmm. dishes were done in the right way. He ended up mm-hmm. like taking photos of the dishes wow. I didn't clean properly, zoomed in on them to show me how badly of a job I did cleaning this pot. Wow. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it I was just like, so that's why like I felt crazy. I was like, yeah, I was Googling like, am I messy? I'd never been called messy before. I had lived with song yeah. before this for like six almost six years. Mm-hmm. And I had, I'm generally a pretty clean person, not like, yeah. like, oh, like clean, but like a generally clean person. Yeah. Um, so I had never, I never had that complaint before. Um, mm-hmm. and it became to a point where I was so hyper vigilant to like, make sure that nothing was out of place that anytime he would drive, he'd come into like the driveway mm-hmm. and like come home, like he had a. Uh, an office space where he films he came okay. home and uh the first thing he would say was if something was out of place wow. and so I became really hyper vigilant to make sure like yeah. I heard him come into the driveway to like look around make sure nothing was out of place make sure nothing was like dirty in yeah. any way and, and when I say dirty I mean this place was so clean it was sterile it looked yeah. like a model home. It was a model home. Wow. Nothing. It didn't even look like anybody lived there. Yeah. And how common is that to hear that, you know, you hear the narcissist arriving home and you just have this like anxiety and tension building. Yeah. Because yeah, you don't, you think everything's either going to be fine or they're going to find some way to cut you down. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What other kind of things yeah. would he do? Um. So it was a lot of that. Um. And then the, and then like a lot of like treating me like a child, like just okay. really talking down to me. I started, I didn't yeah. know how to des- describe it at the time. Now I understand what it is. But at the time I was, the only way I could describe it was like, I felt small, like he made me feel mm-hmm. small and that um, he was treating me like a toddler, um, okay. especially with the cleaning. But also when he, he would talk to me, he would talk down to me. Yeah. Um, any conversation that we would have, if I brought up an issue um, I was talking to him and he was like on the far end of the couch with a, with a, like a notebook, writing down everything I said, and then explaining oh, to me, he was writing everything down that you said with a notebook. Yeah. Wow. Like a police officer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it I'm collecting me, like, evidence for later. 
I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, it made me feel like I was, uh, like he was my therapist because what he would then wow. do is tell me how I was feeling and how oh, the yeah. roots that issue that I had yeah. with him was actually an insecurity of mine wow. or yeah. Or like a, um, like even like little things, like how it was, it was just like my own fault for feeling that way. Like little things, like I would just mm -hmm. say stuff like, I don't like it when, um, you always like, I, I would like to watch a, a movie with, with subtitles on because I have a hard mm -hmm. time processing sometimes and okay. he hated it. And I was just like, can I just like, just for once, can I just like watch it with subtitles? And then yeah. he's like, okay, we need to have a conversation about this. Really? And yeah. And he goes into the living room and he sits on the couch and he's like, you need, you need to come over here. We have a conversation. And I'm like, can I just do this later? Like, this is so ridiculous. Like, this is just yeah. so crazy. And he's like, no, we have a, need to have a conversation now because you need to learn how to communicate. I'm like, okay. Because <laughs> um, of the subtitles. I, yeah, for subtitles. Okay. And okay. I left that, and I don't even remember like really what happened, but I do know I left that conversation with him telling me that it was from something that I, an insecurity I stemmed from and something wrong with me. Wow. And yeah, yeah. What, what did you tell yourself when this was going on? It must have been so confusing. I was, yeah, that was mostly it. I was just like constantly in a state of confusion. I was like, well, maybe like at first I'm like, there's something I need to work on. Like I, I was like, okay, maybe I have the issues of communication. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to work on this better. That's mm -hmm. fine. I can work on it. Um, and then I started getting like really depressed and my self-esteem was lowered. Yeah. And I truly could not even pinpoint that it was because of him. I yeah. thought it was me. Yeah. Yeah. That's so common to hear, isn't it? And the thing is like mm -hmm. when you're an empathetic, reasonable, compassionate human being and you're in one of these relationships, you do look at yourself first. You think it's you before you ever think it's them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's so frustrating because they never think it's them. <laughs> exactly. That's the difference. They like the narcissist just it. sits there. Yeah. They just sit there and go, yeah. it's you. No, nah, it's you. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, the difference. That, to the T, never him, ever, yeah. ever. It was all me. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, when I it. told him at the very end, like, you lack empathy, he's like, no, you lack empathy. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, Matt, did you have those kind of conversations and arguments with him where, like, just like that, you say you lack empathy, and he's like, no, you lack empathy. And it's like, why are you being mean? And they're like, no, you're being mean. Like, they just yeah. throw it straight back in your face. Yes. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, especially at the very end. That's all it was. It was all projection. Like, oh, I'm like maddening. Yeah, I, truly. I was like, mm. I, I was the one that could watch someone cry with like no emotion. Like that wasn't me. That was you. <laughs> what? what happened? Um, yeah. So like, you know, there was, it was month, like a few months of that, of just like this awful, um, just I was so frustrated. This behavior make make me feel like a child talking down to me. Mm. It got to a point where he was degrading me, essentially, where he, um, like, every little thing. I, I didn't flush the toilet properly. And so he came to me. He was like, I need you to come over here and flush it in my presence in front of me. I need you to follow me and flush the wow. toilet. Yeah. And wow. I was so, fr yeah, I was so frustrated. I was like, what? Just flush it. Like, it, yeah. it's normal. Just like, what? You yeah. forget sometimes. Um, but he wanted me to follow him to show me, to show me what, what I had done. And wow. so I could do it in front of him. And then when I got upset, he stood back and was just like, like he, he was just like watching my reaction. Like, like he enjoyed it. Know. Yeah. He just enjoyed that. And that was wow. the first click that was wrong. Um, really? yeah, that was my first, oh no, this is weird. This is not normal. This is not normal behavior. Yeah. So do you think that he, like, he enjoyed getting a rise out of you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I think that they want, they want that emotional yeah. reaction that's why either negative or positive, they don't care. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. So I saw that you made a TikTok video about um, an incident where I think this was quite far in where you had gotten upset and you started crying and he had no reaction. 
Yeah, that was that was the first like that was like the aha moment of that. The other thing was like, oh, this is abuse. And then the aha moment of him having no reaction. I think he actually enjoyed it was that, oh, I think this is a pathological person. Yeah, it's scary. Isn't yeah. it? it was the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced. I and I, you know, like I'm not incredibly sheltered. I used to like work downtown late at night and whatever. Mm-hmm. I had some with some people yeah this was it's the most terrifying thing because what happens is you start to wonder like oh my god like who is this person I have been sleeping next to yes. oh my god or so I can relate yeah go on yeah and because his mask is so incredibly convincing Mm. When I say covert, I'm like, he's so, I was like a psychopath maybe, but so covert, so, so good at appearing kind and generous and good. Yeah. You know? So it was so shocking and, and frankly traumatizing to then see, oh, he might be evil. Like that's evil. Like you know, you're dealing with a monster. Yeah, I don't mince words. That's evil. A hundred percent that's evil. Yeah. I think um, in your video you described it as like a loss of innocence. Yeah. 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 It it wakes you up that people like this exist. Yeah. And they're not they look the worst thing is they look so normal and appear so normal. And sometimes they're good, appearingly good people, you know, sometimes the best people. And that's yeah, freaking like- terrible. It is because it's not just that they look normal. They look like such a lovely person. They're so like endearing and generous and kind and gregarious. And it's like that stark contrast is so disturbing. The Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I went through a similar thing with mine where um, we'd gone away and there'd been some issues and I started crying and I wasn't very well and I had just recently been diagnosed with kidney failure and like I was having a panic attack like it was a really bad situation we'd been fighting he'd been acting like a complete stranger and and I just didn't know what the hell was going on and I got upset and I started crying and he was like dead behind the eyes nothing (laughs) yeah yeah he did not care He he yeah. couldn't feel my pain. It was like he didn't have the mirror neuron like receptors, yes. whatever they're called. Like he couldn't feel me. And it was yes, so exactly. disturbing. Yeah. And I yes, was like, I yeah. And I was like, this person is a complete stranger, but not just a stranger. Like he's a monster. Like, who is this? Yes. It, oh my God. Then who is this part? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But when you say the mirror neurons, that's actually like mm. a hundred true they just do not yeah. have that it's like crying in front of a stone statue they yeah. do not give a shit and yeah. when i say like he said his eyes i totally i was like he was empty i've never seen anyone empty yeah. before yeah but it's it's cold and empty like yeah if you haven't seen it you don't know but if you have you know yeah it's terrifying and mine was just i went to him and i was like you know, I was so confused. Like, what did I do to make you stop loving me? Like, what is going on? And he goes, and he's like pouring his seltzer water, just like looking at me break down and ugly crying. Like I was, this is at a discard too. He was just like, I'm done with you. I'm like, we have a house together. What are you talking about? Um, yeah. Ugly crying. And he's just like staring at me, pouring his seltzer water with the most vacant, unempathetic, stone cold expression on his face and then he turns around as he's like so hold on turns around and he puts his uh seltzer water back in the refrigerator and he looks back and he like gives me this smirk and he like enjoyed watching me cry wow it was That's terrifying i was like I, yeah i'm like living in the yeah. twilight zone what yeah <laughs> what is yeah. this what is this yeah 
I mean, mine, I was like, I'm really not feeling well. And I was like, you know, I've just been diagnosed with kidney failure and we're away and I'm like scared and I'm like, just not okay. And he yeah. literally almost yelled at me like, do you need to go to the hospital? Because I will take you to the hospital. Otherwise, leave me alone because I want to watch TV. And I'm crying oh. and he, yeah. And he's like, I already hugged you before. I'm not going to give you any more attention. And I went in the other room and cried and he got angry that my crying was affecting his ability to enjoy the television show that he wanted to watch. Evil, evil behavior, yeah. evil. Like disturbing. Like, disturbing, it's not yeah. normal. I don't, want to, I don't even know how to stress this. Like when we both talk about empathy, I'm just over here like, that's the defining characteristic. Yeah. That's not normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my friends were like, this person is deranged. Yeah. <laughs> really strange there's some I, yeah. I they're broken i yeah i know there's gonna be people that are like oh they're traumatized i don't give a shit <laughs> i'm not the love and yeah, light but you know what like narcissists a lot like they don't all have childhood trauma there's a strong genetic predisposition some of them come Absolutely. from environments where they were pampered and never told no and all this kind of overindulged stuff some of them come mm -hmm. from trauma but most of the people that end up in long-term relationships with abusive narcissists do so because some aspect of the behavior is familiar because they also have childhood trauma. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like, it's not an excuse like, oh, they have childhood yeah. trauma. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, what does that that's have to do with what we're talking about? So they get to yeah. run around in rooms of lives, right? So that's how that works. We just say yeah, we're all have... adults and we make our own decisions. So. They know a right and wrong. They, they know. That's the thing. Like they know the difference between right and wrong and abuse is a choice. So what happened after this incident? Um, that's when I was like incredibly terrified of him. Mm -hmm. And he took that opportunity to then break me down more because mm -hmm. what he then did was sit on the couch, completely mm -hmm. calm. So mine was like very covert, calm, calculative. Mm -hmm. um, and so he lists down. So, and, and this is like, I don't even know how to describe it, but that's when the mask was completely off and he was even behaving, moving differently. He was yeah. more an overt narcissist where he was just like, he sat down on the couch with his like arms on the back of the couch and mm -hmm. his legs all spelled out like he was king wow. of the castle and yeah. then starts talking down to me about every single thing he hates about me. Everything oh wrong with me. Every single, as I was standing there sobbing, every single possible thing he could chip away at me my communication the way I he thought I was a strong woman and I'm not and I lied to him um everything and it was so wild I'm like I have never lied about anything about me yeah I'm very open book yeah um so it was like they truly believe at the end because you're not that idealized version that they mm -hmm. had you know placed in They're their angry mind at you. that you in then turn have lied to them which mm -hmm. is hilarious the other way around yeah. um yeah it's and then yeah and that's I was like holy shit like what is going on and then he stands up and then after he's like done just like calmly stands up I'm still crying I'm just like what is this I just remember him being like who are you mm -hmm. um he just stands up calmly looks at me he was like this close for me like an inch from me looks at me as I was crying, looks away and then walks down the hallway. Like he was done. He's done now. He's, wow. he's thoroughly broke me down. Yeah. That's really scary. Yeah. And the worst thing about this, I think, I feel like chicken little yelling that mm -hmm. the sky is falling constantly because yeah. if I was, nobody knows who he actually is. And yeah. I am so terrified for the next girl because yeah. I think I caught on early because I was I moved in with him he had never yeah. lived with someone before I think on purpose yeah um and I caught on early and I started noticing there was something wrong and I started calling out stuff and and mm -hmm. things didn't seem right I mean it took me a while still because I was still like it's yeah. my fault but yeah not too long and I think I'm terrified for he's gonna meet somebody else that yeah will think it's their fault yeah because I've talked to people that have been in relationships with truly covert really really covert we have covert mm -hmm. and like whatever the hell 
this narcissist, yeah. the passive aggressive narcissist that Debbie Morza talks about that yeah. been in these relationships for like 10 years, 15 years, sometimes yeah. 20 years. Yeah. And they waste their life with this monster, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, and I mean, I have clients, I have a few clients that have been in relationships with these people for literally 30 years exactly. and they come out and they feel crazy because as you say in, um, Debbie Merz's book, the covert Na- passive aggressive narcissist, when you're with one of these people, it's usually only the partner and the children who ever see who they really are. Mm-hmm. And everyone else sees the mask and it's like this extra layer of gaslighting. Yeah, it really is. It's another layer of gaslighting and also mm. silent the victim because yeah, if you come out, believe them. Are, that is so crazy. And I think almost that's why I'm like, I'm going to make all these TikTok videos. I need to help people. If anyone is just like, she's lying. I'm like, why would I go to this extent? <laughs> you know, like I'm trying to warn people. Yeah. Hopefully it even mentions my name. My book will come up. Just hopefully, you know, just <laughs> something, something will happen and I'll just be like, maybe yeah. I shouldn't be with this person. Please save yourself and run. Yeah. I think that you and I are lucky because we had that really strong, like knowledge and like belief and truth that our narcissist is not going to change for the next person because that's one of the biggest fears that people have coming out of these relationships is that the narcissist is going to change for the next person and be everything they ever wanted for the next person and they're not no yeah they can't you can't learn empathy you can't learn it no you can't it's too late the ship has sailed Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. absolutely Um, yeah it's really i work with those people too like what if they like are better for the next person but mm -hmm. what if on top of it, like maybe it was my fault mm. that they acted okay, mm. in this relationship. And so I was the one that triggered them. Yeah. And yeah. I'm always like, no, you are not at fault is the other mm. thing. They think it's them. And so that's why when they, you yeah. know, if they're afraid the next person will be better yeah. with them because it's their fault in the relationship. Yeah, because when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, they make you responsible for everything they feel and everything they do. And when you are a very empathetic, reasonable person, you go into this relationship and you kind of have that empathy and compassion and you take on that responsibility. And the narcissist constantly is like telling you in one way or another that if you just act right, if you just act this way, then like I'll be okay and I'll behave in a certain way. But then they always move that goalpost. If you act this way, everything will be fine. And then they move the goalpost just out of the way so you can never actually get it. And you get stuck in this loop. Yeah, you get stuck in this loop where you try and get it right. And it's like trying to make people understand that the narcissist could be with absolutely anyone and they will still be who they are because it's not about the other person. It's not about who they're with. It's about them. Yeah. So did you feel like you were trusted to him? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Tell me about that. And I didn't even... Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. I had never experienced a trauma bond before. So mm. I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was going crazy. Yeah. Um, I was, I basically, when I make these videos, it's because I've done everything wrong that you're not supposed to do during the trauma bond. <laughs> um, <laughs> everything, blowing up the phone with text, what is going on, like mm-hmm. just everything, just everything you're, I was supposed to go on, no contact. I did not do that. Like yeah. just everything you're supposed to, just asking for like, questions answers what is because I wasn't I didn't know people just turn off lot you can't normal people can't turn off love like that mm-hmm. his was like oh, love bombing like even mm-hmm. during the cycle of a, they pretend to love you um they're really turning off the off. act they never love they, you they're, they're not yeah. capable of love yes yeah. so convincing they're so yeah. so so convinced yeah um yeah so my trauma bond was awful I experienced a lot of like not to scare anybody, but sometimes you might have this, but I had physical symptoms. Like mm. I was thrown up. I couldn't eat. Um, mm. I lost a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, Gross. I had panic attacks, just really awful symptoms. And then nightmares, lots of nightmares specifically mm. at that moment when they like smirk at me. Wow. That was terrifying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, 
lots of nightmares. And then, then I started going into the education phase where you mm. researching the behavior. And I think the first thing I saw was a video from Lee Hammock because I was Googling my partner didn't care when he made me cry. And I think mm-hmm. he enjoyed it, but I put it to Google the question <laughs> yeah. mark is my partner a psychopath. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like what is happening? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's like the, one of the first videos was Lee describing how he responds when Mm -hmm. someone's in front of him. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's what was happening. So uh, one of my best friends throughout the whole relationship was telling me he's a knock, 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 like just continually he's a knock. And I was like, no, he's not because of this. No, he's not because of that. And then yeah. when he discarded me by a text, um, I had this massive breakdown. Like I had a full on abandonment wound, like breakdown. Yeah. Like I was mm-hmm. like broken and crying my eyes out and that lasted for a day. And then I instantly got onto videos about narcissism and then I Mm. didn't cry for two months because I went so deep into it and I was like, oh my God, he's a narcissist. That was narcissistic abuse. He has no empathy. This person isn't real. And like, I was in shock and for literally two months, I didn't cry at all. I couldn't cry. I wanted to cry. I would look at pictures and try to make myself cry. And I was like, it just wouldn't happen. It was shock. Yeah. Yeah. And shock. I think everyone, absolutely. I think that's, I, I, we should talk about that part because I think after you get out of those relationships, I think, yes, there's education, but also just the shock. Yeah. There's that cognitive dissonance, of course. But there's that shock that you yeah. have been in a relationship with a fake person. Yeah. And I think when people say it's like rape of the soul because yeah. it is a betrayal on another mm. level. Yeah. Like, yeah a betrayal of a person yeah and this had happened when he discarded me it was just after we'd been away and he treated me so horrendously and I was like so disturbed and so shocked and like how could he treat me this way and like I, you know I would never treat someone this way and like I came back and I actually took I had endone painkillers and I actually took endone because I was in so much pain and I wiped myself out on endone because it was so disturbing and it was just so bad and it just yeah the shock and you know I have clients like some of my clients they're like I can't cry and I'm like it's shock it'll it'll come to you yeah and I think that's what initially like my the way of experiencing for me was I lost my appetite I was physically Mm. ill from what I experienced I was like in shock I couldn't eat like mm. I was in shock yeah. I didn't want to eat no I couldn't I had food for days I didn't eat mm. for like two days and then my mom had to come over and take care of me essentially yeah. but um just like that shock of mm. I was with a psychopath like that's yep. terrifying yep that's terrifying yeah I I love the um I tend to use psychopath and narcissist pretty interchangeably because of the Jackson McKenzie definition in Psychopath Free. I love his book. I was reading it on the plane. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So tell me about your experience of the trauma bond after this. Yes. So I think after the initial shock in the education phase, Mm -hmm. um, I kept going back and forth on is this a good person is this a bad person is he evil is he good is he evil Mm -hmm. because he had two very polar opposite personalities like really polar opposite and the abuse was so covert so Mm -hmm. I was I I was so incredibly gaslit I didn't think I I I was like still thinking I had ruined the relationship maybe Mm -hmm. I didn't really it was just if I had just behaved better Mm -hmm. this other stuff but um that was like really for me breaking the just that cognitive dissonance that that was like not normal and and then speaking to a therapist was actually what helped me a lot too okay. um I yeah were they NPD informed so not so much yeah. but I had known her for a while and so okay. I was comfortable with her she knew me good and so um she knows like my past relationships and okay. and stuff. So 
having explaining this to somebody. And then she was the first one that opened up the DSM-5 and was like, mm. so has he had an experience where he has hurt animals in the past in his childhood? And I was like, the psychopathic checklist. Expect? Had he? Yeah, he had. Oh my God. Okay. Um, I'm not, to this day, I'm not sure if it was on purpose or not. Um, mm-hmm. But his, uh, one of his cousins had told me of a time that she had left to watch him or had left for a little bit and she had these a cage full of rabbits and mm. he when she came back all the rabbits were dead but he was the only oh one watching God. the rabbits wow. yeah and so full-on psychopathic narcissist he very well could be yeah he very well could be i want to think to think it's really terrifying because the mask like i said is so incredibly mm. he's like golden retriever video game youtuber like wild to think that that's the person that can cause so much harm yeah but here's the crazy thing is that this is what psychopaths look like yeah yeah the lovely charming he had friends Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah yeah friends that loved him like yeah you don't think that people would be able to maintain healthy relationships they can yeah they can um I think that the thing that really started my journey of educating and coaching people was the trauma bond because Mm -hmm. no one in my world understood it at all because I was so trauma bonded uh that I just I knew he was bad I knew he was a narcissist but I couldn't stop like reaching out and I just had this like inexplicable draw and I couldn't stop talking about it to everyone and you know my friends and family were very like do you like being abused like is it you know was it like is this something you know do they think it's a defect it's like a defectiveness in you yeah they don't understand trauma bonding the addiction side yeah oh yeah let's go into it how it absolutely is an addiction because even though this person treated me like shit I still Mm -hmm. wanted him to like me and love me and be that Mm -hmm. person that he should in the beginning of the relationship um and he would constantly of course it was like a he would criticize me and then afterwards send me these cute little messages I love you and You know, and so that's what causes that trauma bond. It's the mm-hmm. permanent reinforcement of love and affection, yeah. right? It's the cortisol during, you know, hypervigilance, abuse, mm-hmm. all this other mm-hmm. stuff. And then the that's dopamine cool. oxytocin afterwards when they give yeah. you that love, essentially. And the repair. And then the further the relationship goes on, the good times get fewer and further between. And there's more cortisol yeah. and adrenaline and stress. But then when you do get the repair and the love and the affection, you get a rush of dopamine and oxytocin that's just so strong. It's like a gambler at a slot machine. They're losing more money than they're gaining, but every now and then they get a little win and it keeps them there. So after he and I had gone away and he was behaving like a monster, like like really like a monster, like he didn't care about me at all. He was cruel. He was dismissive. He was, you know, we came back and then he was suddenly sobbing his eyes out and hugging me and comforting me and like talking about how much he cared about me after like the most disturbing couple of days I've probably been through and like looking back it's like that it's that cortisol oxytocin dopamine cortisol shit sandwich (laughs) (laughs) oh my god and also him it's very much like one of those pity ploys where he yeah. then yeah it's, it's like, a oh quick God, repair it's- because it's like oh I've behaved like a fucking monster let me quickly yeah. repair and make myself not look so bad and also yeah. make it about yeah. me yeah 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 and like wow. he was like make sure you get home safe and he's like calling Uh-oh. me and texting me you safe and I'm like you don't give a shit like you don't care that I have like kidney failure and I'm having a panic attack and I'm crying my eyes out like in the other room for two days but yeah. now you suddenly care so much and it's so confusing uh-huh. yeah and it's like 
They know what they're doing, yeah. And that's the trauma bond. That's the addiction. There's nothing mm-hmm. amazing about this person. It's the cycle of such intense like hormones that gets yes. you trauma bonded. And it's like, you know, someone can ask you, what do you like about this person? Tell me some good qualities about them. And it's like, yeah, I know. None. None. That's how you know it's a trauma bond, but it feels so intense. It feels like love. And for me, I was like, I didn't know what a trauma bond was. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? I feel like I love this person and I need this person and I have to keep this going. And I was like, what's wrong with me? I was like, what kind of terrible, like, child repressed childhood trauma am I replaying right now? No, it's not. First, I just want to be like, it's not us. Our brains are broken. Yeah. Like, I think the way we have, like, evolved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a malfunction a- of attachment. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. not. Uh, it's just in that moment, I, I speak to people very much like, don't worry. I know right now it feels like you cannot physically leave this person mm. and you or can't like, you still love this person, even though they treated mm. you like shit. And then you mm-hmm. feel like sick and you feel depressed. And, mm-hmm. you know, I went through a phase to not unalive myself, but like, mm. I just didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. Um, with them. And th- I just want to like give people hope because like, that's temporary. Yeah. That is just temporary. Do not go through with it because it's just yeah. temporary. And yeah. you will get it after your brain kind of restabilizes and gets mm-hmm. to a point where you are stable again without the ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you're out of that, you truly have to detox. Like you detox mm-hmm. from this person. You yeah. start seeing them for who they really are. Yeah. And then what I think happens, at least for me, is mm-hmm. immense anger. <laughs> and yeah. like, I Rage. Never- angry person I usually am the person that I I cry it's so frustrating because I cry first I like don't even know how I like pretend like I'm an angry cryer yeah I'm an angry cryer and it's so frustrating because like you want to be like but I cry it does not work out in real life very well um but yeah but like I was angry I was so Mm. angry for being treated and disrespected Mm -hmm. and once you start to see them for who they are you start to then feel disgust and that's what I want Mm -hmm. people to get to I want Mm -hmm. them to get to not people are like love and light no 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 Mm -hmm. (laughs) I want you to get to a love and light phase of oh I forgive no get angry and disgusted that this person had the audacity to treat you in a disrespectful way because that I think ensures that you won't go back to that disrespect Uh, and also understand that anger is self-protective I'm always saying this to my clients it's self-protective healthy anger absolutely yeah um so we've talked about how we've both done the thing that you're not supposed to do right we've both continued to reach out and you know all this kind of stuff how long did it take until you stopped reaching out months months like like two months months. yeah um it was really difficult because also we owned a house together and that makes it really hard yeah we then had to go through legal things you know so Mm. We owned an we owned a house together, and um, that's how you know it's pathological. Instead of just repairing, like getting some kind of accountability, I was just asking for accountability. I was like, "What is mm. happening?" Um, they would rather lose money and sell a home we had basically just bought. We had only lived there for two months or something along those lines before mm. having to sell that. House. So you lose mm. money, you know. Um, I feel like that's a very kind of it's more of a psychopathic trait that they want to take you down even if they're going down with you yeah I think so yeah um I think yeah I I, like I said I keep saying is my nurse is he a narcissist or a psychopath I'm Mm. not sure because he did like they say that um all psychopaths are narcissists but not all narcissists are psychopaths but yeah yeah, and I think the spectrum, right? So They're we have similar, like, yeah. Nar- yeah, there's like the narcissistic people, toxic people, narcissists, like the covert narcissist, grandiose narcissist, etc. Mm-hmm. 
like a psychopath ASPD. It's just kind of like mm -hmm. a, a spectrum. It's a continuum. Of, yeah. Yeah. Of, of yeah. bad toxic people. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the issue with me going no contact was, you know, first I was like so confused because he turned off everything so quickly, which then triggered this abandonment loop. Yeah. Um, boy, do I know that feeling. And I was, yeah, absolutely. And where they like start to resent you, they, they mm -hmm. see you as a nuisance for just trying to reach out to them, figuring out what is going on. Like what is happening right now? What is this? Um, and so I was sending him like messages of a photo, like, of like the love notes that he would send me mm. and be like, I was just like, what happened? Like, what is this? Yeah. What, what, how did you get from here to, to nothing? Yeah. How did that happen? Mm. So that's how my text was. And of course, him being so calculative, he always sounded very reasonable in those re text response back. Yeah. I sound like the crazy one. Every yeah. single time I would reply, um, with like, I would say like, he's a monster. He's like, has no empathy. He's terrified. Did you say that to him? <clears throat> I did. And, and also okay. I said it in text and he would respond with either nothing or we'll talk about it in person. I mean, he, mm, he he's made not going to put it in writing. He never put it in writing. That's the worst part. That's like, mine's the same. Yeah. Calculated. It's so frustrating. Very, mm. very, very scary. Calculative. Yes. Um, and I was so emotionally dysregulated. I was so mm -hmm. confused. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy and, what this yeah. does to you because I think like the thing that my friends found really hard and really confusing is that they've always seen me as like this strong, tough, take no shit kind of person. And they were like, yeah. who are you? It doesn't matter who it does. I just don't think yeah. people think that they would never fall for this type of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. I think yeah. anyone, anyone can fall for it. Yeah. Even if you're wrong, even if you're mm -hmm. like successful, smart, like mm -hmm. it's not yeah, about those dealing with a pathological person. It's mm -hmm. not, it's about you. It's about their pathology. Yeah. And the trauma bond, as we said before, is a malfunction of attachment yeah. and attachment is about survival. So that's why it feels like you're dying. That's why it feels yeah. just so incredibly intense. I think like for me, like I every few weeks it would build and I would feel like I just had to have like contact and I, I would like unblock him and like send a message and then block him again. And I'd be like, Oh, okay. I'm like, I've kind of regulated now. Like it was ridiculous. No, I so get that That's the same way. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it had to get to the point when I just, I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't keep reaching out because every time I did, it hurt me because it was never, they're same. never going to give yeah, they're never going to give you the accountability that you're asking for, an apology. They're never going to acknowledge anything. Yeah. So reaching out every single time, I came back feeling worse. In fact, I tried to reach out and like, oh my god, I tried seeing him one last time, and I was I came back early as he was like quickly as he could leave. Like he was moving all his things out very quickly. Mm. Um, and I was visiting family. And so I came back and was like, Hey, what, what if I just have one last conversation before, like we mm -hmm. leave and he leaves and, and I don't know what's going on, but like, yeah, I came there and he was surprised to see me, of course. Mm -hmm. And I tried to like, like touch his shoulder and just be like, what is happening? And we talked to this couple's counseling, something. And he like pulls yeah. it back from, like, looks at me like I was disgusting. Like yeah. How he looks at me like disgusting. And he goes, yeah. why would I ever want to be in a relationship with someone like you? Like, wow. What? <laughs> what did you do? I, every ounce of self-esteem I had left. And I am actually very proud of myself where I said this, but I was like, hey. I'm smart. I'm kind. I'm beautiful. I have a good job. I have, you know, this and that. I was like listing off things. And I was like, and I think I'm a good partner. <laughs> and then I was just oh, like, I just got like chills from that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, that took strength. It did. It took everything I had. <laughs> of course, it wasn't enough because then he afterwards he like yelled at me some more. So yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. At least we can laugh about it now. And it really is what yeah. you said. You look back, you get angry, and then you see them as pathetic. Sad. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You would rather lose a home, a mm -hmm. life, money. Because he also lost money. So um, 
Yeah. Then just show some kind of accountability. Yeah. And it's like you treated me like I was pathetic. Like, is yeah. that? Well, I mean, it's kind of like the ultimate projection, isn't it? So yeah. how did you get into educating and coaching? Like, what were the steps? And I know you've written a book um, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was also healing for me, to be completely honest. Mm. Um, so during the legal proceedings, he had to, he was trying to get me to sign a non-disparagement clause, which is something that is ridiculous, first of all, to put in the agreement to sell a house. Like, that's unheard of. Um, okay. And... Um, so I was so afraid to say anything about him. And every single time I said something that he thought was about him, he would contact my lawyer and say he wasn't going to sign unless I stopped talking about him. I never named wow. him. It was just like talking yeah. and connecting with other people. Because I found, of course, on Twitter, I met some people that had been through similar situations and I was responding back to their comments. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's like what I see. Like, you know, what you do typically when you're healing, you start seeing these people have the exact same experience. And so you're yeah. like, oh my God, me. oh my God, did yours do this? Mine did this. Mm -hmm. They're all um, the same person. Yeah. 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 And so I was responding back and then he was seeing that and mm. contact my lawyer. And wow. so I instead went dark and didn't post anything. And I instead started watching other people on TikTok and watching all of these videos and reading all these books like Debbie versus mm. the covert passive narcissist that's an amazing um, I book started, I love that book it, yeah. it was the first it's mind blowing like, that, like, mind blowing that was the mm. one I'm like oh my god he's literally textbook like that is him yeah. in this book yeah. yeah um and that's how like when we're like oh my god they're all the same they are literally all the same they and I think they're so special and unique we couldn't be less <laughs> unique. <laughs> you watch these videos and you're like, oh, that happened. Oh, that happened. Oh, I read yeah. that book. That is him. You know what I mean? Or, or, or her. But um, uh, yeah, it was like reading so many books. Um, I read that one. I read um, Psychopath Free. Mm -hmm. I reread it again. Mm -hmm. I love that book. <laughs> um, uh, I read... Um, uh, Dr. Robert Hare's uh, book mm. on psychopathy. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I was basically reading and learning and watching yeah. a lot of people like Dr. Sandra L. Brown, Professor mm -hmm. Sam Backman, um, other narcissists on YouTube mm -hmm. and on TikTok, and other educators. Yeah, and trying to use knowledge to cope with my experience and understand yeah. what I went through. Yeah, And then after that, after I like basically refused to sign that and we sold the house because my lawyer is amazing. Um, she's a badass. Um, <laughs> she, first of all, she is, she's, she's, uh, she's a Ukrainian immigrant who has mm -hmm. a psychology degree. And oh, she's a lawyer. we need that. When, oh, that's I amazing. Like, Whoa. I found yeah. it by accident. I found it by accident. I'm like, Yelp. it was insane. But yeah, she's yeah. freaking phenomenal. And she was like, yeah. no, this is what happened. She's 50% co-owner. This is like how, because they tried to get me to sign without a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. With, it basically like, here, you go away, uh, sign the your name off of the title of the house without anything. And I would mm. lose all rights to the house. Mm -hmm. And I can't roll my eyes with enough emphasis. Like, <laughs> like I would try all of that. All. Yeah. Yeah. So instead I got a lawyer and I, th I don't think he expected <laughs> me to get um, and she was like, no, <laughs> La -la um, so That's yeah, awesome. anyway, after that, then, and the house sold and like, he, he signed all this other stuff. That's when I started making content. Cause I felt like I could speak on what I've learned now, um, mm -hmm. during not being able to say anything. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone getting out of one of these relationships? Um, I would first say that, um, to do so silently, don't mm -hmm. tell them your plan or yeah. what you intend to do. Right. He thought he was going to get away with it without me getting a lawyer, all this other stuff. I was very like, okay, I'm going to try and like leave to a point where, you know, I'll get a lawyer and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. 
I think it's so important to not tell them everything, your plans. That's when, if you start catching on that this is abuse and this might be a narcissist, really keep your cards close to your heart. Um, mm-hmm. Really good advice. Move. Yeah, move in silence, I think is a big thing. Um, and I know that's difficult if you're like a very honest person. Mm. It's self at this point. You have to be really, really careful um, when you leave, especially if there's physical abuse involved. It's not mm. like a covert, mm. but like really dangerous situations. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. first step. And also don't never name them publicly. Nothing good yeah. will come of that. Yeah. I still struggle with that. I know. I just <laughs> saw your face was like. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I know. Um, I think the other thing would be um, really going. I understand going no contact is so difficult. We were just talking about how we both failed at that. So like not so great. But where they now? Though. Learn, now we know. Yeah. Now, a hundred percent. Never yeah. again. So um, yeah, for people who keep breaking no contact, like you get there. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Mm-hmm. And I think the more you do, the better you'll feel. Yeah. So, what are your social media handles? Where can people find you? Um, you can find me on TikTok as No Narc Sense. Mm-hmm. Um. I think we mentioned that I just came out with a book. So my name is Eleni Segredos. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find the book, uh, but they're so nice on Amazon. I love that name. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. True. That's how they appear. Um, mm-hmm. It's on Amazon and it specifically focuses on um, covert abuse and mm-hmm. gaslighting and manipulation and um, narcissistic people. We have a whole chapter on manipulation and how they manipulate and groom you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the- um, I have also, also a whole chapter on empathy because I'm big on the whole empathy thing. I think it's a very yeah. important key character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So guys, definitely go and grab that book. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Claire. It was nice talking to you. It was great talking to you as well. Thank you.